check out my steering here. This does nothing. This movement right here, which is a pretty substantial amount of play. I'll show you guys that just once more here. So that is all the movement in the wheel that does nothing to the steering. So this hasn't been like a major problem. I just took the truck up to New Hampshire, which is about a 120 mile drive, and it was fine. It cruised just fine on the highway, but it did have a tendency to wander just a little bit if the pavement's uneven or you're on a slope or something like that. It's a little bit unnerving at time. So to take care of that, we'll be installing a new intermediate steering shaft, also sometimes called the lower steering shaft. And aside from that, we have a few other little goodies to take care of, but I'm excited. This should really improve things in terms of steering and drivetrain performance, and hopefully we'll get rid of that check engine light. At this point, we should have pretty good heat in the engine block built up. I'm gonna run back to the garage. We'll get this puppy up on the lift and we'll get cranking. So you can probably guess by my having the truck up on the lift here that we're going after the steering shaft first. Just really wanna get this mechanical problem solved first. I know we can do it. And I know if we replace it, we'll get rid of the play. And I'll show you where the play is coming from right now. Also, just a quick side note, you by no means need a lift to do this job. You can do it on the ground. Let's hop on the creeper and I'll show you where the play is coming from. All right, so just behind the driver front tire here, our steering shaft comes down right there. And that coupler goes up to the steering wheel and if we look just below that, over here, you can see this joint is absolutely shot. Look at how rusty that is. Insane. So, when we turn the steering shaft, hopefully I don't get a bunch of crud in my eye when I try to do this for you, but when we turn the steering shaft, look at that. That is all play in the steering wheel. I can, I can feel the steering wheel moving right now. So, this is very, very much ready for replacement. I think if I drove it too much longer, maybe a thousand miles, this probably could just give out at any moment. <laughs> and I don't think that would be very fun. So let's get this thing detached. But before we get into that, let's pull off this front wheel, get it out of the way so we have a better view. Removing the wheel and that little shield that sits in here with some plastic clips reveals the coupler right here that comes down from the steering column and connects to this lower shaft that we're replacing. So we have two 13 millimeter fasteners right here. They may be 12 if you still have factory fasteners, but mine have been replaced so they're 13 millimeter. I'm gonna remove both of these contrary to some people's procedure. I'm gonna try not to unbolt the steering rack at all. A lot of people like to remove two big bolts that hold in the steering rack and shift it around for added movability, but I don't really want to unbolt the steering rack. We're going to try to just unbolt here at this coupler and the one 12 millimeter down here where the lower shaft meets the steering rack. Now, one last thing we should do before unbolting anything down there is take a bungee cord or any sort of device that can hold your steering wheel still and get your steering wheel as close to dead center as possible lock it in so it doesn't move. And then we can come down here and unbolt this because once we unbolt this, the steering wheel is gonna spin freely. So once we have it locked in, we can remove these two bolts. All right, so of course those two upper bolts were a breeze. They're really easy to access. This lower one, <laughs> it's been a pain. I think I've been working on it for like half an hour now. And here are the things that were my friend. A, I used this little brush to clean off the head of the bolt because there was so much rust and dirt and just build up on it that I couldn't even get the 12 mil on there. I first brushed it down, I hammered the socket on. Before doing so, I did apply a hefty amount of Penn State Penetrant. Any penetrating oil should do a good job. It's a good idea to continue to apply this throughout your removal of the bolt. It'll just help loosen things up. You can see I'm using a long pry bar to hold that U-joint still in the middle because when we crank on that socket, it does want to turn the entire shaft. I did have to unbungee my steering wheel, 
to get this into the proper angle. So before we remove the shaft, while it's still connected all the way throughout, I'm gonna recenter the steering wheel and lock it in. But you can see our 12 millimeter right back there. I'm about to finish removing it here. Oh, there we go. And there it is. Probably gonna have to run to the hardware store and replace this so we don't get a new one with our new steering shaft. This thing is worked. With our steering wheel now centered, I'm gonna use a combination of our air hammer with a chisel and our long pry bar here with a hammer to A, split apart these collars a little bit and to move this collar up and to break that lower collar off of the rack. <laughs> oh, finally, finally got this sucker out. Oh my, this lower joint gave me hell, but we got her out. Let me show you how. I have my air hammer in here at a weird angle, but that's the only angle I could get. And yes, I did have to rotate this sucker quite a few times, unfortunately. We wanted to keep the steering rack straight, but I had to rotate this. A, to get my chisel in this little hole right here, in this sliver. I spread that sliver apart to spread the entire collar. And then I went back and forth. You can kind of see my marks on either side of this yoke, I just went back and forth and air hammered it off. It took a lot of persistence and probably 45 minutes of hammering at this point, but wow, just feeling these joints is crazy. Like, that thing is done. Anyways, now it's time to get in there and clean up that shaft. Gonna get in there with the little wire brush and clean up that sucker because there's a ton of buildup on it. And, uh, We'll break out our new shaft. I'm going to try to get each side as straight as possible and get the rack as straight as possible before installing it. But we're making good progress, people. All right, now it's time to compare this totally beat joint to our new one here from 1A Auto Parts. I'm not associated with them, but I do want to give a quick shout out to 1A Auto Parts because I ordered this hoping it would come by Thursday. Today is Wednesday. It, it arrived yesterday, Tuesday. It came two days early. I can't complain, they had the lowest prices I could find. And on top of that, this brand, TRQ, which is sold by 1A Auto Parts, has a lifetime warranty. Yeah, baby. So that means if this thing ever fails or if that joint ever fails again, we get a new one for free. That's what we like. Just in case you need the part number, this is TRQ part number blank. Go ahead and pop that in Google. Oh yeah, let's go. Do you see that? That's a new bolt. We don't have to go to the hardware store after all. New bolt and lock washer on the end there. New U-joint here, of course, which feels phenomenal. Like, obviously no play in the new one compared to this old one, which was just obscene. So that's awesome. I am super stoked. We have that bolt. That's actually huge. That's going to save me like an hour going to the hardware store. So without any further ado, let's apply a little bit of anti-seize to this guy here. And before we stick this shaft in, we'll also apply some anti-seize just to make things work a little bit better. And one note before we go over to the truck, the upper part of the shaft here that goes into that coupler with the two bolts, you can see it has a keyed flat spot right here. That needs to be up top where the bolt is gonna go through. Otherwise, it's not gonna go through. So just keep that in mind when we go to reinstall this and you're installing that top bolt. Alrighty, folks, a little bit of persuasion and she's in. Here's our upper joint, as you can see. Got both of those bolts reinstalled and I have the coupler butted up pretty much up to the joint. There's a small gap there, probably because of the key. The key is only so big for the bolt, but that's really solid. There's no play here at all, which is great. You can see our joint a little bit from the outside, but pop underneath for a better view. There she is. That feels great to have a new U-joint in here. And as you would expect, no play at all. So we should have a really solid steering wheel now, no more play. I'm stoked to toss this wheel on and get it back on the ground for a little test drive here. See how our work turned out. But one quick thing, before reassembling everything, which is really just that plastic cover and putting our wheel back on, you do wanna make sure to torque all these fasteners to manufacturer specifications, which 
if I recall, is 26 foot-pounds. Let me fact check myself real quick. Yes, it was in fact 26 foot-pounds. Make sure you torque both these two upper fasteners as well as the one fastener on our lower slip joint that attaches to the steering rack. Once you have those torqued down, you are free to install your little cover along with your wheel. And do be sure to torque your wheel to manufacturer specs as well, which is 83 foot-pounds. All right, folks, time to pull her out of the garage. See if what we did worked. Oh, immediately. I haven't even gone back and forth with the wheel yet, but wow. Ready? No, no play at all. And out on the road, you can see I sort of messed up our steering wheel alignment because I had to rotate that shaft, which is why you want to keep the shafts as straight as possible and not move them. But no more play look at how responsive the steering is it's amazing check this out no play at all i'm stoked about this someone had actually told me i needed an entirely new steering rack which is about three four or five times the cost of this little lower shaft and the steering rack wouldn't have even solved my problem so i am super stoked to say that this lower steering shaft has resolved all of my steering play. Truck feels amazing now. Alrighty, about eight o'clock the following morning, I had to run and do some work at the job site on our new shop last night. But that's a story for another day. It's a beautiful morning. We have the taco warming up right now. And I decided I'm gonna pull her into the garage head on and use the floor jack just to jack up the front a little bit. And we'll try to give it a DIY at home alignment to the best of my ability. Of course, it's not gonna be perfectly accurate as it will be at the alignment shop with lasers, but we can get the steering wheel recentered or close to center at least. Alrighty, a little bit of playing with the tie rods. Honestly, just one adjustment and the steering wheel is pretty much dead straight, as close as I'm gonna get it uh, before going to the alignment shop. And this was surprisingly easy to do, so let me show you really quickly here how I made this adjustment. So I went to each tie rod which is this rod that comes out of the boot and goes over to the knuckle with the ball joint on the end right there. So what I did was I broke loose this 22 millimeter nut, the jam nut that holds us from adjusting the tie rod. I removed the little clamp from the boot using some needle nose pliers just so that the rod can actually spin and it doesn't tear the boot. And then I used a 15 millimeter box wrench to make one complete rotation of the tie rod. Basically went down, did one half turn, did another half turn, did the same thing over on the passenger side, same direction, and my steering wheel was pretty much dead on when I just went for a test drive, so I'm really happy with that. Super stoked with the entire steering revamp that we just did. Um, I did just notice while I was under the truck, our center carrier bearing is getting a bit worn, so I have a feeling new center drive shaft carrier bearing or entire new drive shaft and bearing is coming soon. And once I have all the mechanicals and everything sorted on this truck, I really want to do something aesthetic, maybe some gunmetal or bronze wheels, maybe a partial bed wrap that fades into the cab. I don't really know, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on JD Cars.